Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Eyes, ears, nose, and throat. Or E E N T. 1. A 34 year old female patient is admitted to the medical floor with an altered level of consciousness. On day 2, she awakens and complains of pain in the jaw. She also has a burning sensation in the roof of her mouth, pain when opening the mouth, and an earache. On exam, crepitus is present as well as tenderness over the mandible joint capsule. Diagnosis? TMJ syndrome. 2. A patient is seen with herpetic lesions on the tip of the nose. Why is this a problem? The tip of the nose and the cornea are both supplied by the nasociliary nerve. Thus, the cornea may also be involved. Untreated herpes infection of the cornea can lead to visual problems and sever complications. Urgent ophthalmology consultation is indicated. 3. What is the resultant deformity if an auricular ear hematoma is not properly treated? Cauliflower ear. 4. A patient presents with an itching, tearing right eye. On exam, huge cobblestone papillae are found under the upper lid. Diagnosis? Allergic conjunctivitis. 5. A patient admitted with a headache on day 3 complains of a sudden abnormal vision and partial loss of vision in one eye. Physical exam demonstrates a loss of central vision, peripheral vision is preserved. Diagnosis? Retrobulbarneuritis. 25% of cases of retrobulbarneuritis are associated with MS or multiple sclerosis. 6. A patient presents with inflammation of the conjunctive and lid margus. Slit lamp exam reveals a greasy appearance of lid margins with scaling, especially around the base of the lashes. Diagnosis? blepharitis, often caused by staphylococcal infection of the oil glands and skin next to the lash follicles. Treatment consists of scrubbing with baby shampoo and, in consultation with an ophthalmologist, sulfacetamide drops and a steroid. 7. What percentage of PEs are caused by DVTs? 95%. 8. A patient admitted for abdominal pain also complains of a pustular vesicle at the lid margin. What would you suspect and how is it treated? Hordealum or sty. Acute inflammation of the mibamian gland, most commonly of the upper lid. Treat with topical antibiotics and warm compresses. Surgical drainage may be necessary. 9. A patient presents with a chronic non-tender uninflamed nodule of the upper lid. What would you suspect? Calasian, usually treated by surgical curatage. 10. A patient presents with sudden loss of vision in one eye which returned quickly. Diagnosis? Amaurosis fugax, usually caused by central retinal artery emboli from extracranial atherosclerosis. A thorough neurological evaluation slash consultation is indicated, including likely an MRI of the brain and evaluating of carotid arteries. The next time an emboli occurs, it may result in a major stroke. 11. What effect does a meiotic agent have on the pupil? It constricts the pupil. 12. A patient presents with the sensation of painless loss of vision in one eye described as a wall slowly developing in the visual field. Findings expected on ophthalmoscopic exam? Gray detached retina. Patient may also complain of flashing lights in the peripheral visual field or spider webs in the visual field. Inferior detachment is treated with the patient sitting up. Superior detachment is treated with the patient lying flat. 13. Where is the correct site to instill eye drops? The lower conjunctival sac. 14. What are the causes of retinal detachment? Primary retinal detachment is due to a change in the retina or vitreous humor, 
A secondary detachment results from inflammation of trauma. Treatment is usually indicated, including heat or diathermy, laser cryotherapy, or scleral buckling, band around the eyeball. 15. What is the medical abbreviation for the left eye? OS. Increasingly, hospitals are changing chart documentation to simply left eye or right eye and avoiding OS and OD, right eye. 16. What are pre- and postoperative nursing interventions for patient with a retinal detachment? Bed rest, patch the eye as prescribed, one or both, position the patient's head so that the retinal teat, or hole, is at the lowest point of the eye, downward, to prevent enlargement of further detachment. Cleanse face, give antibiotics and eye drops pre-op, sign permit, support patient and family and ease their fears about potential loss of vision. Postoperative instructions include review of postoperative instructions carefully, as the patient will likely not be able to read due to visual impairment. Patient should not bend, strain, cough, rub. Eyes or strain at bowel movements increases intraocular pressure. No quick movements or strenuous physical activities slash sports until healed. Close follow-up and return for any complications. 17. A patient presents three days after tooth extraction with severe pain and a foul mouth odor and taste. What complication does the patient most likely have? Alveolar osteitis, dry socket. Treat by irrigation of the socket, medicated dental packing, or iodoform with camphophenic or eugenol. 18. A patient is admitted to surgery with a history of being struck in the eye during a violent MVA. The patient is admitted with a femur fracture and also has eye trauma. On exam, no abnormalities are evident. What should the patient be told? Inform the nurse if ocular pain or blurred vision develops. Repeat exam within 24 hours. Hyphema caused by blunt eye trauma may not be present on initial exam. Retinal detachments may slowly occur and patients should tell medical staff if abnormal vision develops. 19. For treatment of glaucoma, what is the function of acetazolamide and glycerol? Acetazolamide, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, decreases ciliary body aqueous output. Glycerol, hyperosmotic agent, decreases intraocular pressure by making plasma hypertonic to aqueous humor. 20. What potential complication of a nasal fracture should always be considered on physical exam? Septal hematoma. If not drained, a septic necrosis of the septal cartilage or septal abscess may develop. 21. A 48-year-old diabetic male with DKA is hospitalized. He say he was wondering about the pain, itching, and discharge from the right ear. On exam, the eardrum is intact. The external ear canal is red and narrow and inflamed. What is your diagnosis? Otitis externa. Treat by removing debris from ear canal, treating for one week with an antibiotic steroidotic solution. For severe narrowing of canal, an ear wick may be used for two to three days to improve delivery of antibiotic. Diabetics are a higher risk of malignant external otits, which is a severe ear infection with involvement of bone near the canal. 22. Describe the symptoms of acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Gingival pain and foul odor and taste in the mouth. On exam, fever and lymphadenopathy are present. The gingival is bright red and the papillae are ulcerated and covered with a gray membrane. 23. Define strabismus. Strabismus is defined as a lack of parallelism of the visual axis of the eyes. Esotropias are medially deviated, exotropias are laterally deviated. 24. A 47-year-old female on the medical floor complains of excruciation, sudden waxing, and waning pain in the right cheek. She says it feels like an electric shock. What disorder does this describe? 
Tick du la rue. 25. Signs and symptoms of fracture of the zygomatico-maxillary complex? Emphysema of the tissue, edema, ecchymosis, facial flattening, unilateral epistaxis, anesthesia, step deformity, decreased mandibular movement, and diplopia. 26. What are the signs and symptoms of a mandibular fracture? Malocclusion, pain, decreased range of motion, bony deformity, swelling, ecchymosis, and mental nerve anesthesia. The teeth may be offset, and lacerations of the gums with bleeding may be seen. 27. What is the most common type of mandibular fracture? Alveolar or tooth-bearing segment of the mandible. Numbness of the lower lip suggests a mandibular fracture. 28. What is the cause of floaters commonly seen by patients with a retinal detachment? Red blood cells that have been released into the vitreous humor, which move slowly and appear as floating shadows. 29. Why shouldn't a patient be given for home use any topical ophthalmologic anesthetics? These anesthetics inhibit healing and eliminate sensation, thereby decreasing the eye's natural ability to protect itself. Patients may unintentionally rub their eyes severely with significant corneal or eye injury painlessly. 30. What methods can be used for the emergency storage of an avulse tooth? The tooth can be placed in a small container of milk, or the patient may place the tooth underneath his, her tongue. Several companies make a first aid solution in a small cup that may be used as well for transporting avulse teeth. Teeth that are out of place for over one to two hours are unlikely to successfully be reimplanted and survive. 31. What is an early symptom of laryngeal cancer? Hoarseness. 32. An elderly patient presents with the complaint of seeing halos around light. What diagnosis is suspected? Glaucoma. Another presenting complaint of glaucoma is blurred vision. Also, consider digitalis toxicity. 33. What effect would you expect phenylephrine hydrochloride, neosinephrine, drops to have on the eye? Medriasis, pupil dilations. 34. List two drugs that can cause ARDS. Heroin and aspirin. 35. What is a hyphema? Blood in the anterior chamber of the eye. Keep the head elevated in these patients. Ophthalmology consultation is indicated. Patients are at risk of losing their eyesight entirely if significant bleeding occurs, which may do so 24 to 48 hours later. 36. Right upper lobe cavitation with parenchymal involvement is classic for TB. Lower lung infiltrates, hilar adenopathy, atelectasis, and pleural effusion are also common. 37. What test can you perform to determine if the drainage from the nose following a head injury is cerebrospinal fluid? Test the fluid for glucose using a test strip. If it registers near the normal blood glucose level, then it is likely cerebrospinal fluid. Nasal secretions are lower in glucose than serum glucose. 38. What is the normal intraocular pressure? 12 to 20 millimeters of mercury. If elevated above this, then suspect glaucoma. A tonometer can be used by medical staff to measure intraocular pressure or IOP. 39. You would expect intraocular pressure to be affected in what way by administering neosinephrine eye drops? It would increase. 40. How can you prevent medication from entering the tear duct? and draining away when administering eye drops. After instilling the eye drop, apply light pressure against the nose at the inner angle of the patient's closed eye. 41. What do you use to clean an artificial eye? Soap and water. 42. What symptoms does a patient display if he has a retinal detachment? Seeing flashing lights or floater and a non-painful loss of vision frequently described as a curtain slowly drawn across the eye. 43. 
How do you remove wax or a foreign body form the ear? Gently flush with warm saline solution. A dilute solution of sodium bicarbonate, 4 to 8 percent approximately. Placed into the ear five minutes prior will loosen the wax considerably and allow easier removal. 44. In what age group are peritonsillar abscesses most common? Adolescents and young adults. Symptoms may include ear pain, trismus, drooling, and alteration of voice. 45. A common adverse effect of aminoglycoside therapy is what type of neurological damage? Damage to the eighth cranial nerve. 46. What is pilocarpine hydrochloride used for? Chronic open angle glaucoma. 47. Why should an order for atropine be questioned in a patient with glaucoma? Atropine causes pupil dilation, which can increase intraocular pressure. 48. A patient is admitted for severe epistaxis. Initially it stopped, but then soon the blood was flowing significantly from the left nostril. What should be the initial nursing action to control bleeding? Have the client sit upright, lean slightly forward, and apply pressure directly by pinching the nostrils. 49. What are midriatic drugs used for? To dilate the pupils in preparation for an intraocular exam. They are also used to decrease iris muscle spasm in patients with eye infections and decrease photophobia. 50. Who will benefit from pentamidine prophylactic therapy for PCP, pneumocystis carinii pneumonia? Immunocompromised people with previous history of PCP and those with absolute CD4 or T helper cells. Counts less than 200. Criteria for pentamidine prophylaxis are becoming more relaxed. 51. How do you remove a patient's artificial eye? Depress the lower lid. The artificial eye is usually a curvilinear piece of glass of plastic that lays against a round prosthesis posteriorly. If possible, allow the patient to perform this or assist. 52. A patient in triage complains of a sore throat. What further assessment should be done to determine the patient's need for urgent care? Assess for difficulty in breathing, swallowing, strider, fever, or difficulty in talking. 53. What is the purpose of instilling phenylephrine hydrochloride eye drops? It acts as a midriatic and also constricts small blood vessels in the eye. 54. Before removing a foreign body from a patient's eye, what should you first check? The patient's visual acuity. 55. What is a PE? Pulmonary embolism, a blockage in the pulmonary artery. 56. What are the types of cataracts and their causes? Congenital cataracts develop in utero and are associated with maternal rubella infection in the first trimester, or hereditary. Complicated cataracts develop due to other diseases, diabetes, glaucoma, retinal detachments, etc. Senile cataracts occur after age 50 as part of aging. Toxic cataracts occur from chemical or drug toxicity. Traumatic cataracts are caused by mechanical trauma or radiation. Treatment is usually by replacement with plastic intraocular lens implants. 57. What are important postoperative interventions and instructions after cataract surgery? Review postoperative instructions carefully, as the patient will likely not be able to read due to visual impairment. Patient should not bend, strain, cough, rub eyes, or strain at bowel movements, increases intraocular pressure. No quick movements or strenuous physical activities slash sports until healed. Close follow-up and return for any complications. 58. Are sedatives beneficial in acutely asthmatic patients? No. They may be dangerous. 59. What are the most common symptoms and signs of pulmonary embolism? Tachypnea, 92%. Chest pain, 88%. Dyspnea, 84%. Anxiety, 59%.
tachycardia, 44%, fever, 43%, deep vein thrombosis, 32%, hypotension, 25%, syncope, 13%. 60. True or false? Pulse oximetry provides a reliable means of estimating oxyhemoglobin saturation in a patient suffering carbon dioxide poisoning. False. COHB has light absorbance that can lead to a falsely elevated pulse oximeter transduced saturation level. The calculated value from a standard ABG may also be falsely elevated. The oxygen saturation should be measured using a co-oximeter that measures the amounts of unsaturated 0,2-HB, of COHB, and of MET-HB. 61. Are aspirated foreign bodies more likely to be found in the right or left bronchus? The right. This is because the right bronchus is straighter in line with the upper trachea and foreign objects are more likely to follow this path. 62. Why is the administration of propranolol hydrochloride, indorol, and other beta blockers used cautiously, relative contraindicated, in clients with COPD? It can cause increased airway resistance due to beta blockade and increased smooth muscle contraction of the lungs. 63. A client with right lower lobe pneumonia is admitted, with normal blood pressure and mild tachypnea. Which nursing action takes priority, elevating the head of the bed, or assessing breath sounds? Elevating the head of the bed. The patient's comfort and ease in breathing take priority. 64. A patient with COPD needs oxygen. Which of the following would deliver the most accurate concentration of oxygen, nasal prongs, simple face mask, or venturi mask? A venturi mask. 65. A homeless patient is admitted. He complains of night sweats, fever, cough, hemoptysis, pleuritic chest pain, and had a positive PPD skin test. What conclusions can you draw from this data? That the patient had been exposed to M. tuberculosis. Further diagnosis of active TB is confirmed by chest X-ray and sputum samples. 66. What is the mode of transmission for the tubercle bacillus? Inhalation of tubercle-laden droplets. 67. Why is it important not to give a COPD client high concentration of oxygen? It will depress the COPD patient's drive to breathe. Patients with long-standing lung disease depend upon the oxygen concentration more than carbon dioxide to drive ventilations. Additional oxygen causes them to slow respirations, build up carbon dioxide and potentially become less responsive and stop breathing. 68. What is a tonometer? A device that measures intraocular pressure. 69. You note that there is no bubbling in the suction compartment of the water seal container of a chest tube. What would be your best course of action? Check the order to see if the chest tube is ordered with suction and how much. If suction is ordered, increase the suction to the amount ordered. 70. Which vaccinations are important for COPD patients to get routinely? A yearly influenza vaccine and pneumococcal vaccine every 5 to 10 years to reduce the risk of these infections. 71. What is the general course of treatment for someone who has a positive MAN2 test, but does not have active TB? Oral isoniazid therapy for approximately 9 months. Patients suspected of having tuberculosis should have appropriate specimens collected for microscopic examination and mycobacterial culture. When the lung is the site of disease, three sputum specimens should be obtained. Sputum induction with hypertonic saline may be necessary to obtain specimens and bronchoscopy, both performed under appropriate infection control measures, may be considered for patients who are unable to produce sputum, depending on the clinical circumstances. Susceptibility testing for INH or IF and EMB should be performed on a positive initial culture, regardless of the source of the specimen.
second-line drug susceptibility testing should be done only in reference laboratories and be limited to specimens from patients who have had prior therapy, who are contacts of patients with drug-resistant tuberculosis, who have demonstrated resistance to rifampin or to other first-line drugs, or who have positive culture after more than three months of treatment. It is recommended that all patients with tuberculosis have counseling and testing for HIV infection, at least by the time. Treatment is initiated, if not earlier. For patients with HIV infection, a CD4 plus lymphocyte count should be obtained. Patients with risk factors for hepatitis B or C viruses, example, injection of drug use, foreign birth in Asia or Africa, HIV infection, should have serologic tests for these viruses. For all adult patients baseline measurements of serum aminotransferase, aspartate aminotransferase, AST, alanine aminotransferase, ALT, bilirubin, alkaline phosphatase, and serum creatinine and a platelet count should be obtained. Testing of visual acuity and red-green color discrimination should be obtained when EMB is to be used. 72. What is the overall goal for the nursing diagnosis of impaired gas exchange? To promote optimal respiratory ventilation. 73. Why are a patient's eyes patched when a retinal detachment is present? It decreases eye movements that could worsen the detachment. 74. What is the treatment usually for someone with active TB? Treatment for 6 to 9 months with isoniazid and rifampin as the first choice. Other medicines possible used include ethambutol, pyrazinamide, and streptomycin. During treatment of patients with pulmonary tuberculosis, a sputum specimen for microscopic examination and culture should be obtained at a minimum of monthly intervals, until two consecutive specimens are negative on culture. More frequent AFB smears may be useful to assess the early response to treatment and to provide an indication of infectiousness. 4. Patients with extrapulmonary tuberculosis, the frequency and kinds of evaluations will depend on the site involved. In addition, it is critical that patients have clinical evaluations at least monthly to identify possible adverse effects of the anti-tuberculosis medications and to assess adherence. Generally, patients do not require follow-up after completion of therapy but should be instructed to seek care promptly if signs or symptoms recur. Routine measurements of hepatic and renal function and platelet count are not necessary during treatment. Unless patients have baseline abnormalities or are at increased risk of hepatotoxicity, example, hepatitis B or C virus. Infection, alcohol abuse. At each monthly visit, patients taking EMB should be questioned regarding possible visual disturbances including blurred vision or scotomata. Monthly testing of visual acuity and color discrimination is recommended for patients taking doses that on a milligram per kilogram basis. 75. What changes in chest shape would you expect in someone with advanced COPD? An increased anterior-posterior diameter or barrel chest. 76. What level should the collection and suction bottles from a chest tube be kept at in relation to the patient? Below the level of the patient's chest. This prevents fluids from draining down the chest tube back inside the patient which would increase risk of infection and decrease accuracy of I and OS. 77. A patient is admitted for strider. Soon the patient develops increasing fever, sore throat, difficulty in speaking, pale color, and drooling. What should the nurse suspect? Epiglottitis. 78. A patient with a gunshot wound to the chest is admitted. He has a chest tube inserted and a pleurovac attached. The next day, he becomes increasingly dyspneic, tachycardic, and tachypneic. What should you check for? Any signs that may indicate that the chest tube is blocked. Common causes are blood clots, kinks in the tubing, and suction failure. 79. 
What are some common extrapulmonary TB sites? Lymph node, bone, GI tract, GU tract, meninges, liver, and the pericardium. 80. Why is pursed lip breathing taught to clients with emphysema? It causes a physiologic, PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure, which distends the alveoli due to increased alveoli pressure, increasing surface area and this making it easier to gain oxygen and eliminate carbon dioxide. 81. A patient is hyperventilating and blood gases are drawn. What results would expect to see? Normal PO2, decreased PCO2, increased pH, respiratory alkalosis. 82. What is the cause of pleuritic chest pain in pneumonia? Friction between the pleural layers caused by movements in the chest during inspiration and expiration. The lung surface is inflamed due to infection, and the pain fibers are sensitized and especially painful with any movement or rubbing. 83. Why are clients often prescribed at least two drugs for the treatment of tuberculosis? It helps in reducing the development of resistant strains of the disease. 84. What groups of people are at a high risk of developing tuberculosis today? The elderly, homeless, immunosuppressed-slash-immunocompromised, AIDS, foreign-born from underdeveloped countries, IB drug abusers, and other substance abusers. 85. What is the most accurate method of evaluating whether oxygen therapy is effective for a patient? Arterial blood gases. 86. What is the recommended technique for testing a patient's gag reflex? Touch the back of the patient's tongue or throat with a tongue depressor or swab. This should be done cautiously, with suction immediately available in case it causes sudden vomiting. 87. An unconscious patient becomes restless. What could this indicate? Hypoxia. Full evaluation and assessment of the ABC/S may reveal the cause. 88. Why would you hyperoxygenate a patient prior to suctioning his airway? To prevent hypoxia resulting from the suctioning procedure. 89. When suctioning a patient via the trachea or an endotracheal tube, when is suction never applied? When inserting the catheter into the airway. 90. Airway suctioning is considered a clean or sterile procedure. Sterile. 91. What solution may be instilled into a tracheostomy or endotracheal tube to help liquefy secretions prior to suctioning? 1 to 2 milliliters of sterile normal saline. 92. In a patient with finger clubbing, what pulmonary condition must be suspected? COPD. 93. What are the symptoms of narrow angle glaucoma? Peripheral vision loss. 94. When should a tuberculin skin test be read? 48 to 72 hours after administration if it's a one-step test. Hospitals are now requiring a two-step test for individuals newly hired into a healthcare facility to elicit responses that may be missed with a one-step. 95. Many lung cancers are metastatic from cancer elsewhere, 40%. Name four areas or organs that commonly spread to the lungs. Breast, GI, prostate, and renal cancers metastasize to the lung commonly. 96. What should be the nurse's initial treatment of a patient suspected pulmonary emboli? Administer oxygen. Remember, airway, breathing, circulation. Establish one or two IBs, and give IB fluid boluses as indicated. 97. What is otosclerosis? Hardening of the ear bones that prevents normal ossicular ear bone movement. Runs in families, occurs between ages 15 and 50, women more than men. Treatment is often surgery, with replacement of stapes. 98. What should the nurse suspect with the following? Two or more rib fractures in two or more areas and paradoxical chest movement of this area? Flail chest. 
99. What is a priority nursing diagnosis for the patient with an acute asthma attack? Ineffective airway clearance, related to impaired airway resistance and inflamed lung tissue, secondary to bronchospasm, as evidenced by increased secretions, inability to breathe, and feelings of impending doom. 100. What is a priority nursing diagnosis for the patient with acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS? Impaired gas exchange. 101. What procedures should be performed to prevent aspiration in a patient who is continuously vomiting and at risk for aspiration pneumonia? Lie the patient on his right side in the Trendelenburg position. This will help confine the aspiration to the right upper lobe. 102. A pulmonary embolus, P, is suspected. What medical diagnostic test is the most accurate in confirming this? Pulmonary angiogram. However, this is not the usual test performed. Most workups will include a D-dimer blood test, and if this is positive, or if clinical suspicion is high, then a CT scan of the chest or a VQ scan, a lung ventilation perfusion nuclear test, may be done to diagnose a PE. The pulmonary angiogram is done in questionable cases to verify the diagnosis in rare cases. Doppler ultrasound of the extremities may be indicated in some patients to rule out DVT, deep venous thrombophlebitis. 103. What are the risk factors associated with pulmonary embolus? History of a PE in the past, DVT, obesity, recent surgery, birth control pills, trauma, pregnancy, smoking, and immobility such as a recent long car or airplane trip. Some hormone replacement therapy, HRT, meds have also been known to cause thrombus formation with subsequent emboli. 104. What is the mortality rate of ARDS? Over 50% of patients with ARDS die, usually due to multi-system failure. 105. A 50-year-old female is diagnosed with a moderate P and has stable vital signs at this time. What anticoagulation options are available and why are they given? This patient needs to have her blood thinned by heparin, lovenox, anoxaparin, or coumadin. These are given to inhibit further clot formation slash emboli development and allow the body to better resorb the clot or DVT. When using heparin, the PTT, partial thromboplastin time, should be between 1.5 and 2 times the control, 60 to 70 seconds. When using Coumadin, Warfarin, the PT, prothrombin time, should be maintained between 1.5 and 2 times the control, 11 to 12 seconds, or the INR, international normalized ratio, should be between 2 and 3. Once the PT is therapeutic, then the heparin or lovenox can be discontinued. 106. A trauma victim presents with shock, decreased breath sounds, dyspnea, and a mediastinal shift. What should you suspect? Hemothorax or tension pneumothorax. A fast ultrasound scan will identify pleural fluid and other things. Placement of a test tube will be diagnostic and possibly therapeutic. If a tension pneumothorax is suspected, then immediate needle thoracostomy is indicated. 107. A patient being treated for an acute asthma attack has been assessed and placed on oxygen. What should be the next intervention? Administration of nebulized bronchodilators such as albuterol and ipratropium atrovent, usually via nebulizer. Steroids should be given in nearly all cases unless contraindicated. If critically ill, then consider epinephrine, heliox, and possibly intubated in rare circumstances. And 4 should also be initiated to give intravenous medications, as well as a cardia monitor to assess rhythm. 108. The above patient has received two nebulizer treatments without improvement and becomes agitated. The pulse oximeter has dropped to 80. What possible intervention should the nurse prepare for? Intubation. This should be avoided if possible, unless absolutely necessary, 
due to the worse outcome. Rapid sequence intubation should possibly include use of intravenous ketamine for sedation as it also acts as a bronchodilator. 109. During the initial treatment of a client with a pulmonary contusion, how should fluid therapy be managed? If the patient is hemodynamically stable, fluids should be restricted. Fluid overload can lead to complications such as ARDS and hypoxia. 110. What are the risk factors for ARDS? Head injury, drug overdose, aspiration pneumonia, hemorrhagic shock, massive blood transfusions, transfusion reactions, near drowning, pulmonary contusion, smoke inhalation, sepsis, and trauma. 111. What are the signs and symptoms of attention pneumothorax? Cyanosis, hypotension, tachycardia, asymmetrical lung expansion, distended neck veins, chest pain, respiratory distress, and subcutaneous emphysema. Rarely tracheal deviation away from the collapsed lung is noted, this is a late sign. Decreased or absent breath sounds on the affected side. 112. If cyanosis occurs circumorally, sublingually, or in the nail beds, the oxygen saturation is below what level? 80%. 113. What is the initial step or test that should be done if a tension pneumothorax is suspected and the patient is critically ill? Get a chest x-ray to confirm or go ahead with needle decompression of the suspected tension pneumothorax. If the patient is hypotensive with altered mental status and a tension pneumothorax is suspected clinically, then an emergent chest decompression should immediately be performed prior to any chest x-ray. Some experts feel that a chest x-ray that shows a tension pneumothorax is a mistake, it should have been treated prior. 114. Describe the pathophysiology behind a tension pneumothorax. Trauma or spontaneous collapse of the lung, on one side occurs, and subsequent ventilations of the bag valve mask or endotracheal tube cause positive pressure air to leak and escape from the lung, into the pleural cavity, intrathoracic, where the air becomes trapped. Additional air causes the pressure to increase, causing increased shifting of the mediastinum which compromises the other lung and also causes the softer large blood veins, such as vena cava, to collapse or kink and block blood flow to the heart. If no blood flow goes into the heart, then no blood goes out, and shock and eventual death may occur. 115. What is COPD and what causes it? COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and is a group of disorders that block the normal flow of air through the lungs, thus trapping the air in the alveoli. This includes chronic bronchitis, asthma, and emphysema. The causes primarily are lung irritants such as smoking, dust, and pollen, and some are genetically related. 116. What is emphysema? A type of COPD disease of the lung parenchyma where changes in damage in the alveolar wall results in enlarged alveoli, distal to the non-respiratory bronchioles, and is usually associated with continued smoking, secondhand smoke, and ALF-1 antitrypsin deficiency. 117. What are the causes of hemothorax? Hemothorax is blood in the pleural cavity and results from chest trauma, penetrating and blunt, lacerated liver, perforated diaphragm, rib fractures, cancer, and other causes. 118. What is a pleural effusion? An accumulation of fluid in the pleural space, which occurs secondary to other disease states. This fluid may contain many leukocytes and pus, empyema, blood, hemothorax, or chyle, chylothorax, from lymphatic fluid leakage. Thoracentesis may be needed for diagnosis and treatment. 119. What finding would be expected in the patient exhibiting hyperventilation? Increased respiratory rate, anxiety, diaphoresis, diffuse chest pain, jaw pain, and carpopedal spasms. 120. What is pulmonary edema and what can cause it? The collection of fluid in the extravascular tissues of the lungs, caused by fluid overload, left-sided heart failure, 
mitral stenosis, ARDS, MI, PE, neurogenic, brain intracranial hemorrhage slash bleed or tumor, aspiration, inhalation of toxins, and other causes. 121. What is Shane Stokes' respiration? Alternating periods of apnea and deep, rapid breathing. There are multiple causes. A serious intracranial abnormality such as acute bleeding or tumor should be considered. 122. A 68-year-old male is admitted with severe CHF and pulmonary edema. A mnemonic for use of medications slash treatment is LMNOP. Name the meds or treatment. LMNOP stands for Lasix, Morphine, Nitrates, Oxygen, and if severe, P for past the endotracheal tube. Intubation. 123. What are the four major types of malignant tumors that involve the lungs? Squamous cell carcinoma, small cell and large cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. 124. A patient with a hemothorax has a chest tube inserted, massive blood loss in the drainage chamber and the patient begins to decompensate. What procedure should the nurse anticipate? Emergence thoracotomy. The bleeding from the large vessels must be clamped or controlled, otherwise the patient will die. 125. What is the most aggressive lung cancer that rapidly spreads but responds to chemotherapy? Small cell carcinoma of the lungs. 126. What is atelectasis? The partial or total collapse of the functioning alveoli, caused by infection, airway obstruction, COPD, ascites, obesity, smoking, pain, drug use, tumor, pneumothorax, lung compression from large hemothorax, and is common postoperatively for abdomen and thoracic surgery. 127. What advice should you give to a patient who is on oral birth control and is also taking INH? An alternate method of birth control should be used. INH decreases the effectiveness. 128. What type of lab study is used to determine if the tubercle bacilli is present in sputum? Acid fast staining. 129. What is a priority nursing diagnosis for the patient with a flail chest? Impaired gas exchange related to pain. 130. What constitutes a positive tuberculin test? 10 mm or more of induration at the injection site. 131. What is the major complication of Bell's palsy? Corneal inflammation, keratitis. 132. What is the first visual disturbance seen with open angle glaucoma? Peripheral vision loss. 133. What is the outcome of an untreated retinal detachment? Blindness. 134. What effect does a midriatic agent have on the pupil? It dilates the pupil. 135. What are the symptoms of narrow angle glaucoma? Severe eye pain, rapid vision loss, and colored halos around lights. 136. What type of glaucoma is considered a medical emergency? Acute narrow angle glaucoma. 137. What type of glaucoma is considered a medical emergency? Acute narrow angle glaucoma. 138. True or false? People under 35 years of age with positive TB skin tests should have at least six months of isoniazid chemoprophylaxis. True. 139. Is there a higher incidence of spontaneous pneumothorax among males or females? Males. Especially tall, thin males who smoke. 140. What is trismus? Painful spasm of the muscles of mastication. 141. What accessory x rays may be obtained to diagnose a pneumothorax? Expiratory film and, 2. Lateral decubitus film with the suspected lung up. 142. What kind of pneumonias are commonly associated with a pneumothorax? Staph, TB, Klebsiella, and PCP. 143. Which strain of influenza is more common in adults? 
Adults, Influenza A. 144. When should a patient's eye not be dilated? When the patient has narrow angle glaucoma or an iris supported intraocular lens. 145. What is the outcome of an untreated retinal detachment? Blindness. 146. What is the best method for detecting the development of glaucoma? Yearly intraocular pressure readings after the age of 40. 147. When testing the six cardinal fields of gaze, which cranial nerves are being assessed? 3, 4, and 6. 148. What is the primary reason for treating streptococcal pharyngitis with antibiotics? To protect the heart valves and prevent rheumatic fever. 149. Prior to administering a treatment to the eye, what should the nurse document? Visual acuity. 150. What is the treatment for a corneal injury from a caustic substance? Flush both eyes with copious amounts of water for 20 to 30 minutes. 151. What are meiotic eye drops used to treat? Glaucoma. Pilocarpine is the most common, instilled four times daily. 152. What is the medical abbreviation for both eyes? Oculus Alterc, OU. 153. A client is admitted with acute narrow glaucoma. A diuretic is ordered. Why? To lower the intraocular pressure. 154. What finding would lead the nurse to suspect an ear infection in a one-year-old? History of fever and pulling the ear. 155. What would be a priority nursing diagnosis for this patient? Airway obstruction and ineffective airway clearance. 156. Interpret the following blood gases, pH 7.49, PACO 226, HCO 323, POW 2100. Respiratory alkalosis. 157. What is the most common organism causing bacterial pneumonia? Pneumococcal pneumonia. 158. What are the two most common findings with an orbital floor injury? Diplopia and globe lowering. 159. Why is topical cocaine often used in the treatment of epistaxis? It anesthetizes the area and constricts blood vessels, decreasing bleeding. Pharmacies are increasingly avoiding the use of cocaine due to costs and other issues. 160. A patient is admitted to the floor with a tracheal fracture. After three hours, he develops worsening respiratory distress and several attempts at endotracheal intubation fail. What emergency procedure should the nurse prepare for? Cricothyroidotomy. 161. True or false, a cricothyroidotomy may be performed with a large bore, 12 gauge, 14 gauge needle. True. 162. What is an appropriate nursing diagnosis for the patient with Meniere's disease? Sensory or perceptual alteration. 163. What are cataracts? Loss of transparency of the lens of the eye or its capsule, causing a decrease or loss of vision. 164. What percentage of upper respiratory infectious agents are non-bacterial? Non-bacterial agents account for over 90% of pharyngitis, laryngitis, tracheal bronchitis, and bronchitis. 165. Name two antiviral medications that are useful for viral pneumonia. Amantadine for influenza A and aerosolized rebavirin for respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. 166. An older patient with GI symptoms, hyponatremia, and a relative bradycardia most likely has what type of pneumonia? Legionella. 167. True or false, a nasal fracture is a closed fracture. False. All nasal fractures should be treated as open fractures. 168. What is the medical treatment for Legionella pneumonia? IB erythromycin. 
169. What are the classic signs and symptoms of TB? Night sweats, fever, weight loss, malaise, cough, and a green or yellow sputum most commonly seen in the mornings. 170. What is the approximate oxygen concentration of a patient receiving 3 liters of oxygen per nasal cannula? 32%. Note that room air oxygen concentration is 21%. 171. Above what level of oxygen concentration is there an increased risk for causing oxygen toxicity? 40%. 172. What is the primary risk factor in the development of COPD? Cigarette smoking and secondhand smoke. 173. Interpret the following blood gases pH 7.30, PACO 250, HCO 324, PAO 280. Respiratory acidosis. 174. What are the early signs and symptoms of tuberculosis? Low-grade fever, weight loss, night sweats, fatigue, cough and anorexia. Thank you for watching. Open your wings and follow your dreams. Aim high and pass the board exam. God bless all.